Newt Gingrich scoring a big victory, not against his Republican rivals, but against the media. This strategy, is it helping him a lot? And why? Our focus group weighs in right after this break. Politicians are hypocritical and we all know that. That is not news, but the media is hypocritical. And finally, somebody stood up and called them out on being hypocritical. Last night was a come to Jesus moment for the media because I think they were shocked when they saw the reaction of the crowd. They weren't expecting it. And it was finally, like, like we've been saying, it's, it's finally someone calling them out on being hypocritical for once. A truly remarkable moment on the campaign trail this week. Two of them, in fact. Newt Gingrich last night got a standing ovation at the Republican debate, his second in a week and only the fourth in the history of these GOP showdowns. And both times the candidate went after not his opponents, but the media. Take a listen. As you know, your ex-wife gave an interview to ABC News and another interview with The Washington Post, and this story has now gone viral on the Internet. In it, she says that you came to her in 1999, at a time when you were having an affair. She says you asked her, sir, to enter into an open marriage. Would you like to take some time to respond to that? No, but I will. I think the destructive, vicious, negative nature of much of the news media makes it harder to govern this country, harder to attract decent people to run for public office. And I am appalled that you would begin a presidential debate on a topic like that. person in here knows personal pain. Every person in here has had someone close to them go through painful things. To take an ex-wife and make it two days before the primary, a significant question in a presidential campaign, is as close to despicable as anything I can imagine. My, my two daughters, my two daughters wrote the head of ABC and made the point that it was wrong, that they should pull it, and I am frankly astounded that CNN would take trash like that and use it to open a presidential debate. As you noted, Mr. Speaker, this story did not come from our network. As you also know, it is a subject of conversation on the campaign. I'm not, John, I get your point. I take your point. John, it was repeated by your network. You chose to start the debate with it. Don't try to blame somebody else. You and your staff chose to start this debate with it. Right. Now, right. okay. let me be quite clear. Let me be quite clear. The story is false. Every personal friend I have who knew us in that period says the story was false. We offered several of them to ABC to prove it was false. They weren't interested because they would like to attack any Republican. They're attacking the governor. They're attacking me. I'm sure they'll presently get around to, to the Senator Santorum and Congressman Paul. I am tired of the elite media protecting Barack Obama by attacking Republicans. <laughs> So does Gingrich have a valid argument, or is he simply trying to score political points, or both? Let's talk about it now with our panel. This is all, these are all Republican voters who watch this debate and have some thoughts on this. Jay Townsend, let me start with you. Yes. Please. Does he tap into a narrative that exists and is felt by Republicans or conservatives? He touched a nerve, and the nerve is this. Let's go back to 2008. Everybody in the press corps knew that John Edwards was two-timing his cancer-stricken wife. Not a word was said. Everybody knew that John Kerry had gone through a difficult divorce. Why didn't they air a segment of his ex-wife two days before a primary or an election? The media was the chief apologist for what went on during the Clinton years. 
This is the double standard to which conservatives and Republicans really object, and that's part of the nerve he touched last evening. Double standard, do you agree? Uh, Tony, say it. Oh, without a doubt, and you don't forget the Dan Rather story that was fabricated about George W. Bush's right. alleged service in the National Guard in Texas. But look, the proof is in the pudding. 16-point swing for Newt since Tuesday, mm -hmm. and it's been reaffirmed by last night's performance. Not by attacking Mitt Romney, not by attacking Rick Santorum or Ron Paul, by attacking Juan Williams, or rather responding to Juan Williams and John King, because the Republican electorate does believe, whether or not Democrats want to say it's not true or not, in their DNA, that there's a media bias against Republicans, and he tapped into that. Now, Didi Benke, we learned on Tuesday you're no fan of Newt Gingrich, <laughs> but does he, does he espouse a, a strength, a, a confidence, an ability to sort of take down his opponent that appeals. Well, you know, he, remember he called Mitt Romney a liar and said he's full of pious baloney, which I don't know, it sounds kind of interesting at this point. <laughs> but he definitely is a good debater and he's good at invoking emotion. And he did make the good point that the media, the elite media, they do have a double standard. So, you know, give him points on that. But it doesn't mean that he doesn't sound hypocritical. And for him to sound like a victim, I'm sorry, it just didn't work for me. Go ahead. You know sorry, what, though, uh, Mary Walker. Yeah, politicians are hypocritical and we all know that. That is not news. But the media is hypocritical. And finally, somebody stood up and called them out on being hypocritical last night was a come to Jesus moment for the media because I think they were shocked when they saw the reaction of the crowd they weren't expecting it and it was finally like like we've been saying it's it's finally someone calling them out on being hypocritical for once do you think it taps into something it's not just that uh, those Republican voters in that audience felt that Newt Gingrich was being beat up on, but that they, conservatives, Republicans, feel that their yeah. issues yes. are Absolutely. not given enough, yeah. you know, fair well, coverage, that kind of thing. Right. Right. Tim White in This the back. might have been the final straw. I mean, it was particularly egregious, this ABC News piece, coming out some 48 hours before the South yeah. Carolina primary. It's timing. It's sort of, it, it's very obvious, and I think a lot of people in the audience saw it for what it was. Um, and, and the fact that Newt brought that up and really was so aggressive was, was a great time to do this and stand up. You know, there's another, there's a piece in Politico today that talks about how he's also tapping into this, his angry thing there, is, is tapping into some anger that some Republicans feel, some voters feel in this yeah. country, that they're mad as hell and they're not going to take it anymore, and they, they like seeing somebody who has that same passion. We, we, Do you think that that's working for him? Go ahead, Tracy Davis. But I think that his anger is a little bit over the edge. I mean, just like I said last time, when the second time when he was talking to John, he was literally angry. I think it was an unbelievably brilliant deflector and he tapped into something that we all feel. I worked for President Bush on the campaign and there was no Fox News there. And President Bush 41. And yes, and every single place we went, I can't even tell you what the what the media was like. We'd go to an event, it would be an unbelievably fantastic success and you'd watch it on the news and it would act like he was a total loser out of touch. It was really, really painful. So, and yet, and yet, is there a danger, as she seems to point out, in being angry? It, it might, you know, yeah, feel it's good no. it's not at, at the moment, at but the over, moment. The, over the long haul, yeah. you know, is what? that going well, you know to? It it's, 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 it's a character flaw. It's, it's slightly beyond. Flaw. It's slightly beyond anger. It's passion. Yes, no. and that's no. what I think. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and that's passion. what I think. New has to be very careful about because he's obviously tapping into something. It is his palpable anger. Part of it's also because the people feel duped by the media. 2008, right. who didn't just have a bias against Republicans, but against anyone who wasn't Barack Obama. They went right. against Hillary Clinton, who they want right. purported right. to be right. the best thing since last year. Go ahead. Yeah, May I? I think we're missing the call of the question. The fact of the matter is, Newt Gingrich was able to assign responsibility yeah. to the individual who actually attacked him. And that is sorely missing in our present and past administrations. That's why we have a war on terror rather than a war on the sponsoring states. I think this showed a great deal of character for him, yeah. and it makes him appear, and I believe he is, presidential. But wasn't it, was it an attack? Because, you know, John King has come out and said, look, I had to ask it. You know, I was like, I, mean, I couldn't have to let the whole debate go by and not mention it. Go ahead, Penny Nance. Well, I would say that the unintended consequences of this, even though I don't think this is what ABC wanted, is this was a vetting process, and it was an important vetting process, because this is an important issue. Divorce is an important issue. Half of our kids live in a home without a mom and a dad. And the adultery issue is real. And so now it's out there. The whole thing, we think, is out there and it come a general election if he actually wins and it looks like he may win uh, South Carolina 
if he actually wins the general, it's done. Just, I think it's he, over with. Just because he's a good TV moment doesn't mean that he's the, a good candidate, doesn't mean he's a good person. I mean, and doesn't mean that his ex-wife is not telling the truth. We don't know. It's a he said, she said. You know, I, 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 sorry, I haven't, got, I haven't gotten Ledwood ugly. Brooks in. Go ahead, it's Ledwood. a fair question to ask, but also the first question of the bait, the unemployment as hot as is, the debt, yeah. sky high, there's a lot more serious problems. But what Newt did when he answered the question, he stayed on offense. He blamed the media, and by reframing the question, he took control. I mean, this story that his ex-wife came out with would either sink him or backfire, and we're still waiting to see what would happen. Yeah, there's a question yeah, about whether there's going to be empathy for him. In, I think when it seeps in, it's going to not play well with women voters. Exactly. No. Also, it's going to be interesting if he wins the nomination. Just to think of a first lady who, you know, basically stole somebody's husband. Oh, come on. Go for him. Are we looking, power, wait, so are we looking to Washington this, uh, to be our moral guidepost? That's why I go to church. I'm not looking That's to right. someone That's in Washington right. to be my moral beacon because if I'm looking for that, I've got very slim pickings. So, you know, okay, what, what do you think about the anger issue? Because they say that women in particular have an issue with somebody who's angry over the long haul, that that, that won't play well with women in, in the long haul. As long and, as I can put a roof over my head quality. and I can feed my kids if I can't currently do that, you can be as angry as you want. And, and I don't care. A lot of Americans are angry right now. Exploding bomb. Should let women answer this question. What is that? His campaign. It goes up and down like this. But that's new. But one last point. But the one because because even though he he is you know more volatile or passionate, he has been saying. I am the one who can debate yes. Barack Obama. He he did. Did. He's been saying, look at Romney. He may be a good guy, but he's not the, that effective a debater. Does that appeal to any of you who yes. weren't necessarily Gingrich fans? I still sure. don't yeah. like him. Sure. We're forced. Yeah. I don't like yes. him. You see our but you don't like him. I don't like him, but he's a good debater, and That's I seriously think he can wipe the floor with Obama. We spontaneously sat for him watching him on TV from my yes. own living room, and trust me, I have no love for Newt Gingrich. But back to your original question, Megan, the Republican electorate does believe there is a bias, and worse, it's kind of like having a Red Sox and or call a Yankees game. That bias goes into <laughs> how they're conducting these answer. debates. Think about George Stephanopoulos' question in New Hampshire <laughs> about contraception being banned at a state level. Do you think Republican primary voters right. have registered in a in a poll that they're worried about contraception being banned at the right. state level? No, but right. it's part of their liberal agenda right. that they're seeping into their but conduct in these debates. It's, it's it's very I gotta leave it at that. It was, listen, it was a great discussion. Thank you all so much Thank for you. being here. We appreciate Thanks, it. Megan. As always. Interesting, right? It's just interesting to hear people's thoughts on that. The panel did a great job. We're taking your thoughts on it right now at kelly at foxnews.com.